Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Uh, today we're taking a look at the HP Compact that I got as part of a, a bundle of random hardware. Uh, if we start by taking a look at the front of the system, uh, we can see an Athlon sticker, a DVD drive, one power button, a headphone and a mic jack, two USB ports and two little uh, LED indicators. Inside of the system we'll find a button to unlock the uh, top panel. Uh, there's another one of these on the uh, other side and you'll need to uh, press both of them to get the top panel off. On the back we have an exhaust fan, a power connector, mouse and keyboard ports, left and right speaker, VGA, DVI connector, 6 USB ports, 1 Ethernet port, and we also find a graphics card with an HDMI and a DVI uh, port. Opening the system is not hard, uh, we simply just push the two buttons on the sides of the uh, computer. And just like that, the uh, top panel simply just opens right up, revealing the insides of the system. Inside the system, we find a nice CPU cooler uh, with two heat pipes going through it. It seems to be cooled by the uh, intake fan. Uh, this is not a design I am fond of, but if it didn't work, they probably wouldn't do it this way. Let's take a quick look uh, around the system, just for good measure. Soon we will be taking the system apart. Uh, at this point I probably have to point out that the system smells like nicotine, uh, like the previous user had been a smoker or something. This eventually got bad enough uh, and I actually had to open a window. First to come out is the graphics card, it was a little stiff but eventually it came out. It turned out to be uh, an Nvidia GeForce uh, 220 GT. The I.O. bracket seems to have been damaged a little bit. Lifting up the power supply reveals our hard disk. Uh, it looks old school, but it's still connected via SATA. Lifting the DVD drive was a little stiffer than the power supply. This also revealed the second hard drive. Uh, I had been wondering why three SATA connectors had been plugged in, and I guess that I now know why this is. I'm not sh yet sure what kind of uh, capacities these drives are, but we'll find that out uh, soon enough. <clears throat> I decided to take the uh, RAM sticks out to see what capacity we're looking at. As it turns out, we're looking at two sticks of 1GB DDR2 RAM for a total system capacity of 2GB of RAM. Uh, this is not much. I wanted to take a look at the CPU, so I took the bracket connecting the uh, intake fan and the uh, heatsink off. The heat sink was just held in place by four screws and these were easily removed. After removing the heat sink I found a thick layer of thermal paste. I mean whoever had applied this uh, was clearly the uh, generous type. I promptly started cleaning the CPU surface with uh, paper towels and rubbing alcohol. The sticker on the front of the computer was uh, right. This is indeed an Athlon 64 CPU. I don't ne yet know uh, what model it is but uh, what I do know is that it's an AM2 socket, since this was written on the uh, motherboard. The heatsink has a, a copper base. This is nice, but I did find a few scratches on the surface of the uh, copper. This indicates that someone has been treating this heatsink poorly, or maybe the uh, manufacturer just has a bad quality control unit. Alright, let's put the CPU back. I replaced the thermal paste with a more appropriate amount and screwed the heatsink back into place. When I went to screw the bracket back into place, I realized that the little screw went nowhere and that the bracket is just held in place by the top panel. Not sure why they put a, decided to put a screw here. I put everything back in its place. Uh, there are no locking mechanisms for the power supply nor for the DVD drive. These are also just seem to be held in place by the top panel. The top panel is very stiff and I pretty much had to put my entire body weight on it before it went back into place. But it did this with a nice loud snap, so you'll never be in doubt whether or not this panel is actually on. Next came time to uh, test the system. I put it on the nightstand next to my desk. I plugged in power and uh, monitor. There was a little problem though. Uh, the monitor used a VGA connector and since the graphics card only had HDMI and DVI, I used an HDMI to VGA adapter. The HDMI adapter did not go into battery though, so I had to switch to a DVI to VGA adapter. Luckily this solved the problem and we were welcomed by the Windows 7 desktop. It turns out that our two drives are split into four partitions 
Uh, the total capacity is just over 300 gigabytes. The CPU turns out to be an AMD Athlon 64 uh, 3800 plus and if I'm not mistaken this is a single core processor. I started transferring some files and tools from a USB stick to the computer C drive. Transfer speeds are slow as fuck, I mean really really slow. Finally, after a long time, the, fi the files had been transferred and it was time to test the CPU. I used Cinebench R15. This Cinebench run took a long time as well. I was right about the CPU only having a single core. The final result was an abysmal 46 CB. This is really, really slow. No wonder the system generally feels so sluggish. I wanted to test the, the Counter-Strike source benchmarking tool. That's the settings autofill to high, so this is what I went with. The benchmark runs well, and uh, we had a final score of 116 frames per second. And not as bad as I had first expected. I also ran Fermat preset 720p, which yielded a result of 344 points. The GPU reached the temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, and our average FPS was just 6. So far, this PC is not doing as bad as I first thought, but, I should, but it surely can do with an upgrade. Luckily, I have the upgrade parts. With the bundle that, came, that this PC came in, I also got a damaged socket AM2 motherboard. On this board, we find two sticks of 2GB DDR4 RAM and a dual-core Athlon 4450 Bravo. Surely, this will do wonders for this machine. So I took my nice little setup apart, opened the top panel yet again, and started to remove the uh, heatsink. I cleaned and removed the uh, CPU from the uh, HP PC and did the same with the, uh, the one from the damaged motherboard. After this, it was pretty easy to just seat the new CPU in the old uh, socket. Installing the new RAM was no issue either, they pretty much just slid right into place. I then put a nice pea-sized dab of thermal paste on the CPU and reinstalled the heatsink. No issues there. Um, Except for the fact that the system still smells like an old smoker's lungs. With the heatsink installed, I put the bracket with the useless screw back between the fan and the heatsink. From here on, it was easy as uh, closing the DVD and the uh, power supply. The uh, top panel still needed my entire body weight to close. Time to set it all up one more time. My excitement was short lived. Before the system had a chance to boot, a friendly Windows 10 uh, notification appeared, asking me if I wanted to upgrade. I politely yet firmly let Windows know never to ask me this question again. Let us try Cinebench R15 one more time. Ah, look at those two cores. It looks beautiful. The result, however, was not as beautiful as I expected. We only got 87 CB. Um, I really expected more, but I will accept this as an improvement. I also ran the Counter-Strike Source benchmark again, at the same settings of course, uh, which yielded a result of 170 frames per second. Uh, this is a better improvement uh, than I expected, so thumbs up for that. Fermat preset 720p yielded no difference, but then again, why would it? And before you ask, yes, the DVD drive works just fine. All in all, the system did better with the upgrades. It does not feel as sluggish anymore as it did before, and I pretty much like that. The system is now useful. I said in the previous video that I wanted to give this system to a friend as a home theater PC. However, uh, the way this thing smells, I'd rather, I'd rather not do that. So I'm just going to put it up for sale. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for uh, watching.